Hey everyone, Boone here from PremiumBeat.com. So today I'm going to show you all the different ways you can fine tune keyframes in Adobe After Effects. So let's get started. Keyframes are really at the heart of an After Effects project, so knowing how to work with them is especially important. Now there are a plethora of different ways to manipulate and work with keyframes, so let's take a closer look at a few of these. So here I have a very, very simple animation. This is a rocket changing position. We have three keyframes changing the position here. Now let's say I want to adjust some of these values here. I don't want to add or take away any keyframes. I just want to adjust the values of the existing keyframes. Let's say, for instance, I want to adjust this middle keyframe. So one of the most common methods is I can just drag the playhead over here and then I can adjust the values here. Now, if I had my playhead just one frame off and I were to adjust these values, that would add another keyframe and kind of mess up the whole animation. So a simple way, if you want to adjust keyframes where you don't have to drag the playhead over, is to double click it. And when you double click it, that's going to bring up this little value dialog box here. And the cool thing about this is not only can I make really precise position changes here, but I can also change the way that I view it. So if I want to view uh, the percentage of the composition, I can do that. And I can put that right in the middle or wherever I want it. So this is, this is very helpful. Now this animation is pretty terrible. It's very blocky and very linear. So we can change this by adjusting the interpolation of the keyframes here. So now what I'm going to do is I want to change the interpolation of all three of these keyframes. Now what interpolation is, it's essentially telling the keyframes how to change value over time or through space, and it can help us smooth that out. So I'm going to select my position attribute, which is going to automatically select all three of my keyframes. Now I can go to animation and select keyframe interpolation, and take note that you can also see these keyframes here on the comp panel in space. So here we can change both the temporal and the spatial interpolation. Temporal being time here on the timeline, and spatial being in space here on the comp panel. So let's change these to Bezier. Now we have a bunch of different options here, but I'm just going to change these to Bezier so we can smooth these out. And last but not least, we have roving, and it's set to lock to time. Now this will adjust our middle keyframe. So if I have more than two keyframes, it's going to give me this option. If I just had two keyframes, I couldn't do this because it's going to be affecting our middle keyframe. So if I select rove across time, what that's going to do, I'm going to select OK. You're going to see it change my keyframe here. But now what I can do is anytime I adjust the timing on this, it's going to lock that, or it's going to rove it across time, but lock it in spatial position, which is very, very helpful. Even if I move the first keyframe here, it's going to keep that rocket going the same speed. So there you can see now we have a much better looking, much smoother path. Now interpolation can be a pretty complex and in-depth subject, so I urge you to check out my other standalone tutorial on the topic. I'll link it in the article. So another great way to work with keyframes is directly within the composition panel here. So I can see my motion path and I can see all of my three corresponding keyframes here. If I shift click and kind of deselect or select these individually here, you can see they're selected here in the timeline panel. Now I can't really see it very well, so I'm going to go over here and relabel it to red. Now we're getting a better look at what's going on here. So with my selection tool, I can manipulate these keyframes. Let's say, for instance, I want to change the position of my final keyframe. I want my rocket to launch all the way off screen. I can simply pull that over here. Now it's going to launch and go off screen. Also, since I switched these keyframes from linear to bezier, I have these bezier handles. So I can adjust the curve of these keyframes. So let's say I want to smooth out this kind of turn here. I can adjust that accordingly. Now it's going to do a smooth turn and go off screen. Now the reason it's automatically rotating is because I set it to a command called auto orient. I don't have any rotation keyframes. If you right click, go to transform, you'll see an auto orient and you can select it to auto orient to the path, which is really, really helpful. Now, if you take a closer look at this motion path, you'll notice all these little dots along the path. Well, these are speed dots, and this gives you a visual reference of how fast your graphic is moving through time, or how fast it's animating. Now, the further that these dots are spread apart, the faster your graphic will move through time. The closer and more dots that are on this motion path, the slower it will move. Now, if you look, these dots are all pretty uniform. Now, the reason that they're uniform is because we have this middle keyframe set to rove across time. So if I grab my 
beginning keyframe and I move this closer in space, it's going to automatically adjust my roving keyframe to keep the timing in the animation uniform, which can be very helpful. But if we want to change that, I'm going to undo, I'm going to right click this middle keyframe and turn off rove across time. Now if I grab this first keyframe and move it, we're going to see that it's not shifting and that these dots, yeah, I'm moving it to the side so you can actually see it. These dots are all close together now, meaning that we're giving it less space to travel over over the same amount of time, so it's going to basically just go slower. If I were to move it way out here, we're going to see that those speed dots are going to spread apart because it has a further distance to travel over the same amount of time, so therefore it's going to move at a different speed. So that's really the beauty of rove across time or roving keyframes. I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. You can also make adjustments to keyframes via the pen tool. You can see there's an option to actually add vertices, delete vertices, and also change interpolations of keyframes using this convert tool. While the speed dots give you a visual reference for speed, if you want to make adjustments to your speed, you'll need to go into the graph editor. So if you go down here in the timeline, you can see there's a graph editor button. I'm gonna select this. Now this gives us a visual representation of we have time mapped horizontally and then we have the speed mapped vertically. And if you see here, you can see this says 500 pixels per second. We can see our first keyframe, we can see our roving keyframe, and then we can see our last keyframe. And the tooltip here gives me also, shows me the pixels per second. So we can see it's around 507, 518 at the beginning, and then it kind of ramps up here. And we have some Bezier paths or Bezier handles here. And what I want this to do, if we look at our rocket animation, it's not very natural. If you've ever seen a rocket launch, it does not launch like that. It starts slowly and then ramps up in speed. So that's what we want to do with our keyframes here. So to do that, I want this to start at zero pixels per second. And then I also want it to slowly ramp up. So what I can do here is I can grab my Bezier handle and that's going to change the influence. Let's change that to a hundred percent and then grab our second keyframe here and then bring that influence down. And now we can see visually that the speed ramps up and you can see that reflected in the speed dots as well. Here it's slow and these get further and further spread apart to go much faster. So now let's take a quick preview of this. And there we go, we actually have a realistic looking rocket launch now. Now if you want to make even more precise changes to speed, I'm going to turn off the graph editor and you can select a keyframe, go to animation, keyframe velocity, and you'll have this dialog box here where you can manually adjust the incoming and outgoing velocity of your keyframes, both the speed and the influence. Last but not least, I want to talk about the variety of different ways you can view keyframe data. One of the most important shortcuts you'll want to know is the U keyboard shortcut. Now if I have my timeline panel selected here and press U, that's going to bring up my keyframes, just the properties that have keyframes on them for the layers. Even if I had 10 layers here and all 10 of those layers had keyframes on them, and I press the U key, it's going to bring up all the properties for all those layers with keyframes on them and show me just those. So it's a very useful keyboard shortcut. And pressing U again is going to simply minimize and hide those, so I'm going to bring those back up. Also, you can view data in the info panel, which I have open here. If you don't see it, you can go to window, select info. Now with the window panel, if I select a keyframe, I selected my middle keyframe here. If you look up, it's giving us a couple of different things here. It's showing us the time code where it's located, one second and 14 frames, and it's gonna show both the temporal and spatial interpolation. So it's showing us that this is a roving keyframe and it has Bezier handles spatially. Very, very cool. Also down here in the timeline panel, you have tool tips. So if I just hover over a keyframe here, it's gonna give us the time code information and the property values. And if I right click, it's also gonna give us those values. It's gonna allow me to open up that value box where if I just double click on the keyframe, that same edit value property box. And with right clicking, there's a variety of different options. We have selection and navigation tools, and also there's access to, there's shortcuts to all of the animation, um, all the tools that we're looking at before in the animation menu. Now, one of the cool things is this keyframe assistant. Now, if we look at keyframe assistant here, there's just a bundle of cool little creative options here 
that um, are very, very interesting. You can convert audio to keyframes for some really, really interesting results. Convert expressions to keyframes. Um, there's shortcuts to all the easy ease options. And you can time reverse keyframes. For instance, with these three, I could select all three of these, right click, select keyframe assistant, and then reverse those keyframes to quickly you know, reverse the motion. Very, very cool. So I, I suggest you play around in here. You can also access this in animation keyframe assistant. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Be sure to check out Premium Beat for high quality, royalty-free music and sound effects for all of your media and video projects.